gasoline consists of many different hydrocarbons, which are useful as a fuel, but also as solvents. Therefore, I'm going to fractionally distill gasoline and roughly separate it into its components. The exact composition of gasoline varies, but it is pretty similar due to the many laws regulating it. Harmful substances like benzene and sulfur compounds are largely removed, while ethers like MTBE are often added. This is done because they serve as an anti-knocking agent, which increase the octane rating of the fuel. Since about three years ago, all gasoline in my country switched to E10 gasoline, which means up to 10% of the gasoline is now bioethanol. Ethanol also serves as an anti-knocking agent, so at the same time the ether content can be reduced. So in general, the main components in gasoline are 40% paraffins, 35% aromatics, 10% ethanol, and 15% alkenes and others. Within the 40% of paraffins, 6% are straight alkanes, 32% are branched, and 2% are cyclic. Of the aromatics, about 15% is toluene, and 20% are other alkyl benzenes like xylene and ethyl benzene. And within the 15% of alkenes and others, it is mostly alkenes with the added ethers, and some small impurities like water and sulfur compounds, and some other hydrocarbons which are present in very low concentrations. The boiling point of hydrocarbons is strongly correlated with the amount of carbons in them, so compounds with the same amount of carbons will usually come over together during the distillation, and they possess very similar properties, which usually makes it unnecessary to fully separate them. For example, a mixture of different hexanes is often used as a solvent. So anyway, to get started, the first thing I did was going to the gas station and filling up a jerry can of Euro 95 unleaded gasoline. Then I built a fractional distillation setup, which is a fractionating column on top of a flask with a condenser attached. What will happen is that the column has a temperature gradient from the bottom to the top. The higher it goes, the cooler the column, and so compounds with a high boiling point cannot climb far up the column since it is too cold, and thus they will condense lower in the column and any compounds with a low boiling point can travel far up the column and can potentially reach the condenser. Due to the constant cycle of evaporating and condensing in the column, the compound with a low boiling point will get more concentrated towards the top. So I've put in a stirring bar and pour in about a liter of gasoline and bring it to around 80 C. The gasoline started to boil very quickly and we can see the thermometer stabilizing somewhere around 25 degrees Celsius. Most likely, this is mostly isopentane with a boiling point of 28 C. After staying at this temperature for a while, it increased to around 35 C, which is likely pentane with a boiling point of 36 C. A few minutes later, the temperature started increasing to above 40 C and I decided to empty the flask and collect my first fraction, which consists of mostly C5 hydrocarbons and lower. So I slowly increase the temperature to get the next fraction to come over. Another liquid started coming over quickly and the thermometer stabilized around 65 C. Most likely this is isohexane with a boiling point of 60 C and hexane with a boiling point of 69 C. A lot of liquid came over at this temperature and after it seemed finished I took off the receiving flask and poured the second fraction into a new bottle. I read some papers which said that ethanol forms azeotropes with hydrocarbon compounds and boils off together with them between 45 and 70 C. Since so much liquid came over at this temperature and hexane should be a relatively minor part of the fuel, I think that almost all of the ethanol is coming over together with the hexanes. Also, if there is any MTBE in this fuel, it should also be in this fraction. Since ethanol and MTBE are both soluble in water, I will simply wash this fraction with water afterwards, which should take out most of the ethanol and MTBE. So I increase the temperature again, and this time the temperature stabilized a little below 90 C. 90 C should correspond with isoheptane, which is a relatively minor part of the fuel. So very quickly the temperature already started increasing to around 96 C. The compound with a close boiling point to 96 C is heptane, which has a boiling point of 98 C which is the same for 2-heptene, but it is also quickly followed by iso-octane, with a boiling point of 99C. Since they are so close together in their boiling points, it is not possible to separate them here. They can be separated with a lot more effort, but you would likely need to stack multiple fractionating columns on top of each other. 
I removed the flask to collect the fraction, but I left it a little too long at this temperature, so it is slightly overlapping with the next fraction. But I will redistill it afterward to get better separation. I left it going for longer so everything around 96C could come over and I put it into a new bottle as a new fraction. After most of these compounds came over, the temperature rose to 110C, which is the boiling point of toluene, which should also be a relatively large fraction. After a while, it stopped coming over and some high boiling point compounds were just refluxing in the column, so I stopped the distillation. Since the last fractions were overlapping somewhat, I decided to put the toluene fraction with the previous fraction and separate them better by distilling it a second time. I put the liquid that was left behind in the flask in a separate bottle, which should contain high boiling point compounds like xylene, octane and other hydrocarbons with 8 or more carbons. So now, I will redistill the fraction between 78C and 99C to separate the heptane and isooctane in the mixture from the other compounds and get a clearer view what is in there. So I put the fraction back into the flask and started heating it again. When we take a close look at the column, we can see the line of condensation slowly move upward. When it reached the condenser, the thermometer read 80C and quite some liquid came over. The temperature didn't stabilize at this point before, so it is possible that it was heated too quickly during the first distillation. ADC should be the boiling point of benzene and cyclohexane, though benzene is less than 1% of the total gasoline, so it is probably mostly cyclohexane. Afterward, the temperature increased to 90C, which corresponds to isoheptane. After that was finished, I emptied the receiving flask back into the bottle and start distilling over the rest of the liquid around 96C, which should be straight chain heptanes, heptines, and isooctane. When that was finished, I added this fraction to the other fraction containing most of these compounds. Then I put all the contents of this bottle into the flask for redistillation. I heated up quickly and distilled over everything up until 96C. After a while, it stopped coming over, so the isooctane heptane is now in this fraction. So now it is not necessary to boil over the rest. I will just add the remaining liquid to my impure toluene bottle. So in the end, I created 6 different fractions of the gasoline. But the second fraction likely contains a lot of ethanol and maybe some MTBE. So I will wash it with water and see how much of the content is actually hexanes. We can see that the total volume of the fraction before washing is 140 ml. I put the fraction in a separatory funnel and wash it 3 times with water. After the washing is finished, I drain the hexane layer into an Erlenmeyer flask containing molecular sieves to remove the remaining water. After letting it sit for a day, I am left with around 80 milliliters of hexanes, which means there was about 60 milliliters of ethanol and MTBE in this fraction. I put the molecular sieves in a bottle and store the hexanes with them. So in the end, I have several different fractions that can be used as a solvent where purity is not too important. It is possible to wash and dry every layer and then redistill them to get a better separation, but for now it is not necessary. For my next videos, I'm doing some organic synthesis for reagents that I need in a bigger project. Depending on how it goes, the next video will probably come out next week.